Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm a member of the Baltic Crew team and I'm going to talk to you today about Ad Manaliti. The exhibition is called Biosphere Peluche or Biosphere Plush. So the title of the exhibition, Biosphere Plush, refers to two main things. The first of those is Biosphere 2, which was the world's largest Earth research experiment um, based in Arizona, where a Eight people were isolated for, the plan was around two years, um, and they were trying to recreate the Earth's atmosphere to see if it could be created on another planet or out in space. Um, the, it was really considered uh, by most uh, scientists and many people to be a failure of an experiment. Um, so add, and that's for a number of different reasons. So Ad is partly criticizing and kind of reassessing that experiment with this exhibition. The other thing that Ad references in the title here is the word plush, which is a little more simple. It basically just means something that's soft or tactile to touch. And there's a few very plush materials in the space that introduce that softness that was maybe missing from the Biosphere 2 project. So overall, the whole space has been envisioned as a sort of community centre uh, where it's fully accessible to everybody or it is intending to be. So Ad really is a painter but applies painting to many different parts of their work. So you can see the wall paintings around the space the carpets and the canvas paintings are all designed by Ad and all make up this larger installation. So on the exhibition guide, you'll see on the cover, there's this uh, digital painting, which if you look at the floor in here, the carpets recreate this painting. And uh, there's also at the very back of the guide, another one which shows the top half of it is the wall painting in the entrance way. And the bottom half is the wall painting just in front of me here. So you can see how the canvas paintings have been related to the wider space. And Ad is really interested in treating painting as an open, uh, expanded medium that also encompasses design um, and functionality as well. So Ad Minaliti references a lot of art movements in our work, but particularly those from parts of Latin America and Argentina in particular, where Ad is from. So the painting style is really referencing geometric abstraction from particularly two art movements, both started in 1945 one of which was the Art Madi movement. And they were a group of very playful artists who mainly used bright colors, geometric shapes, and uh, were using differently shaped canvases and sometimes 3D artworks, um, which at the time was quite a new and radical thing to do. So you can see how Ad references that movement in the paintings with the bright color palette the abstract shapes, that for all these are abstract, there are some recognizable symbols and shapes in here. So in this painting, the, there is a butterfly made up of lots of circles and other shapes. And up here you can see a flower and another flower in this painting. Um, so the whole series that these are from is spread around the entire exhibition. It's called Fable, Butterflies and Flowers. And this series, as well as referencing that movement of geometric abstraction, also it's inspired by a series of children's books um, with a character called Sarah Kay. And these were written by and designed by Vivian Kubas. And they, for all, it seems very innocent, this children's book series, they were introduced at a particularly um, difficult time politically in Argentina when the, there was a fascist regime which um, abducted women and children um, who were fighting for women's rights and equality. Um, so by having this character with uh, 
a girl, Sarah Kay, with curly hair, pink long dresses, um, depicted in nature with butterflies and flowers. Um, she was really trying to um, show a narrative of love and friendship and kindness through this, the stories. Um, all very innocent sounding, but they also reinforce the traditional roles put on women in society, which really fit in with that government regime at the time. So in the paintings, Ad is trying to take some of that imagery and really repurpose it and um, give it a new context using a really broad color palette, which is purposefully non-gendered. Pink for girls and blue for boys. We all kind of just know that Ad actually includes both pink and blue in the butterfly here, but set amongst a background of so many other colors from bright primary colors to kind of less used shades as well, and really challenges some of those ideas that we set on color, because in the end, color is a spectrum. Um, it's something that is actually beyond language, you could say, and it's hard for us to really control. Um, so Ad really uses that to kind of talk about this openness uh, and also a non-binary way of thinking, which comes through in a lot of other ways in the exhibition. So as part of the wall paintings in the space, which are really influenced by design from around the 1960s through to the 1980s, um, Ad is kind of referencing wall paintings that were often used in public spaces around those times, but maybe less so now. Um, and the the quite bright, varied colour palettes of those times that, again, just we see less often nowadays in interior design and in public spaces. Um, but there's a particular part of the wall paintings here where it very obviously looks like a face on the wall. But when we really look at it, this is just made up of five circles within a larger circle within a kind of rectangular shape. So this isn't necessarily a face. You could take these shapes apart and it's completely not a face at all. But we so quickly kind of look for these recognisable images in things that we look at. Um, and I think this really relates to some of the other themes in the exhibition, the way that we judge and uh, make assessments about people or objects or things when we first look at them and how our brains try and categorise uh, things and kind of everything in the world. Um, and I just think it's quite a good analogy for maybe talking about the idea of seeing certain parts of an identity as a spectrum or as something that can't always be categorised, um, for example, gender or sexuality. So we're very quick to sort of look at somebody and just make these assumptions about them, like we see this face on the wall without really questioning it at all. So one of the most unusual aspects of this exhibition are these mannequins uh, with uh, furry heads and hands as well. So they have very animal qualities, but they're standing like humans and Ad refers to these as furries. So furries is a term that is used to describe often people who are really interested in uh, animals having anthropomorphic qualities. So whether that's standing or talking like a human, um, maybe wearing clothes like a human. Um, fairies can also be a, have a sexual connotation as well, but don't always. So when I'd first started using the fairies in their exhibitions, it was mainly to display the clothes that I'd designed. So Ad really is exploring the idea of painting as I said before, is a kind of functionality and design as well as the kind of fine art canvas painting that we also see in the exhibition. So I'd started to design these clothes. Here they look a bit like maybe silky pajamas um, and wanted these to be displayed much like a painting as part of an exhibition. I'd had trouble with the fact that to display these, the best way seemed to be on a mannequin, but mannequins that only really came in two forms, so a very 
masculine male mannequin or a, a female mannequin. Um, and instantly, when putting the clothes on either of these, it, it gendered the clothes. So I tried to disrupt this with these animal heads and gloves. And as well as kind of taking the focus on gender away from the clothing, it also adds this other element where they feel like uh, there might be somebody in there. Um, that some people find these quite eerie, quite kind of uh, scary to approach. And they disrupt the space and maybe make us question how dominant we are as humans in the space. So maybe this kind of alternative world that's created in here is controlled not by humans, but by other species, um, which relates back to the idea of space travel and space exploration, which I is referencing in the title and in some of the paintings we're going to explore as well. So the other series of paintings in this exhibition is this one called Space Playset. Before making this series, Ad was working on a series of paintings inspired by rooms in a doll's house. And this really follows on from that. Is It's inspired by children's toys and the very gendered nature of these often. So Ad was researching a new children's doll called Luciana, which is um, a doll you can buy with an expensive spaceship add-on as well. Um, and Luciana was introduced to try and encourage girls and subsequently women into STEM subjects, so science, technology, engineering and maths. Um, and Ad was frustrated with that method to address those issues because it's still gendering the toys by creating a doll that's specifically for girls you're kind of saying that all of the other toys around space travel and stem subjects aren't for girls um, which it's still it's still gendering them um, ad is calling more for just removing the gender completely uh, you'll probably notice when you look at toys in shops, they are in both very obvious and maybe less obvious ways. They're very separated into toys for girls and toys for boys. And this really does have lasting impacts on people um, as they grow up and in the future and reinforces the very traditional roles, um, gendered roles that we're often taught to play into. So the paintings also include the geometric shapes and colours that Ad uses in all of their work, um, but they're described as space fantasies and you can see some archival images that Ad has then overlaid their own shapes onto. Um, so the images are from around the 50s to 70s perhaps and a time when the term retrofuturism could be used when there was this very optimistic uh, idea of space travel as a new concept being explored. So another element of Ad's installation here at Baltic is the queer feminist zine library, which you can see on this A-frame. You're welcome to pick up these zines and read them as long as you put them back again. So we did an open call for the zine library um, and it represents international artists and writers. Uh, you might have come across the word zine before, but maybe not. It's basically the end of the word magazine. And zines were started as a way for people who didn't feel represented in mainstream media and publications to share their thoughts and opinions, their artwork, their writing, um, and also for people to communicate. So they're common amongst subcultures, um, but they've also really increased in popularity in recent years and anybody can make a zine. So they're traditionally, they're really cheap to produce. They're often photocopied um, and then distributed by hand, which um, it kind of it avoids being involved in the capitalist system that the zines are often rejecting. So this scene was made in this space as part of the exhibition. Um, I'm gonna show you next the Feminist School of Painting, which is a very active making space in the gallery. So the Feminist School of Painting is a space where workshops take place every two weeks in the gallery. This is gonna happen right up until the end of the exhibition and you can book on them online. The workshops are all led by different artists who represent different marginalized communities. 
and they re-examine art history. They try and de-center uh, white male dominant voices um, and just reinterpret that history for uh, their own audience. Um, they always include a practical element as well in the workshops. When there's not a workshop taking place in here, Ad has provided these amazing colouring books which you can either work on in the space or take home as well. Um, Ad has designed the whole colouring book and you can see a range of interior design imagery with lots of different styles and shapes in there and you can really make it your own by colouring it in. So in the exhibition space, Ad has designed a number of lingering spaces where you're really invited to stop and stay a while in this exhibition. Um, it's not one that you just can walk through and pass through. You're very much invited to sit on a beanbag or a chair, read the zines, do some colouring, and maybe think about some of the themes that are brought up in the exhibition.